we made it back out to the mountains. Today we're gonna be playing Glen Isle Disc Golf Course. And right when you get here, you know it's gonna be mountain course because you look up from your parking spot and just see a basket stuck up in those trees. I think we're at around 8,000 feet of elevation today on a resort property, so it's private property. But welcome back to another episode of my series, Into the Mountains, where we're gonna try to go to all the mountain courses within about a 90 minute drive of Denver and rank the top 10 so that if you guys are coming into town, cause I get this question probably like four or five times a week, what courses should I play? You'll know the best mountain ones. This course is 21 holes. Looks like there's three par fours, but the first hole is not a par four, but it is 550 feet. So I'm hoping it's pretty downhill. What the heck? Looks like this is the used discs. Look at this thing. Or not used, but found. What the heck? Looks like it's from Ching Discs. Disc with an ace on it. Man, people gotta collect their discs. And before you ask, yes, I do have new shoes. I'm still working on a video that's about the best shoes for disc golf uh, and my recommendation. So I'm still trying to actually find them. I really haven't found the best pair of shoes for disc golf and no one's paying me to say that their pair is the best. So it does look like whole one tees off from a natural pad right there, way downhill. But this is a wedding venue apparently, so. What a view off the first hole here. 574 foot par three. If it gets stable, if it gets stable, I have no idea how far that is. Kind of crazy to start on a 600 foot par three. Ah, We're gonna keep the shots a little wider today so you can get like the full feel of this place because it's kind of crazy. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we got this nice little path to walk up here to the next hole, which apparently is a 200 foot par three. So. Kind of giving you the difference already. Almost too short to mess up. Oh no. <laughs> we are not hitting the gap and we are not happy. <laughs> kind of still putt. <clears throat> ah, great layup. All right, hole three is a 447 foot par four. Looks like you have to hit this gap and then it's up the hill to the left. Honestly, it looks like you can probably go over it if you throw the perfect shot through this middle gap, but I'm not gonna eagle this anyways. I was gonna say S-Line CD1. There's a little left to right, which I think can still work, but I think throwing this strike on Heiser, just kind of right at the gap, it'll get a little flip. Oh, no flip, get through. Ah, has not been flipping for me at like Denver elevation, and then I come here and expect it to flip. It's a little stupid. So we landed right in the path. The basket, you can probably barely see basically straight ahead of us there. I mean, you really just gotta, I probably maybe even should've just thrown like my pier out this gap. Just get through these first trees on some steep highs or let it flip up towards the basket. <sighs> oh, I hit it. Let's go. Get a skip. Long putt. One of the things I've learned about these mountain courses is even always feels pretty decent. Your discs change, the way that they fly. You're also so much more tired because you're just hiking for 21 holes. But if I could like, teleport myself to these courses every single day, I think I would play multiple a day. Oh gosh, shit, whoo, dang. I was just rude to myself. This might be the heaviest breathing video I've had in a while. Hole four, 210, right up the hill there. Looks like it's 20 to 30 feet past that like tree that looks like it's right, that it looks like it's right, wow, calm down. My thoughts are just throw a pathfinder at it on a slight hyzer because it's not super stable. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Birdie baby, let's go. This is just cruel, finish this here. I don't have to walk to the next one. I don't know why I was expecting to go to a mountain course and not be hiking, because that's what you do in the mountains. Maybe I'm just stupid. The one scary thing about going up and up and up though, is if you roll away, you can go really far down. But this hole's 258, straight down there. Looks like you want something to turn and then finish softly. I think we're gonna go pure actually at it. Pure is basically mid and I never picked it up. Get a couple of these warm up gap shots. That really sucks. Oh no. Now I have to go back to find an opto pure. So I think we'll throw an MB through the gap then just a little more turn. Luckily I think if we just go straight down the hill after this hole, we'll get to where it was. No! I thought that was perfect. All right, you got some scramble games to play. That's not bad run, actually. That's better. Ooh. So it was one of my practice shots that I launched. It was one of the throws and I was like, hey, I should probably figure out how to hit a gap today. That I launched the pier. It rocketed off a branch, skipped over the basket. So here we are. Oh man. 
buckets. Oh, but unfortunately, as you'll see in a second, we're at the top of this. So time to climb back up. Wow. Well, after that little excursion, I need a break to drink my pee water so that I don't cramp. Shout out electrolytes. Element, if you want to shoot a sponsorship my way. What a gorgeous spot. And I think this next hole exemplifies that. All right, hole six, up the hill. Par three, 182 feet. And I think it's, it's just shaped so well for flex forehand, so we'll do that with my little baseline zone. I wish it was baseline zone, but soft is what we got. Cause that's all played again, had one had a gift card. Like that. High left side. Sit. Perfect. Oh, you actually kinda, well, not ace running, but you can go a little deep and be fine. But luckily we didn't have to worry about it. Threw it almost perfect. All right, got a solid little 415 foot par three, straight down this hill. Do have a little tailwind. Part of me wants to throw the Pathfinder, part of me wants to throw the Origin. I also kind of wonder if it's if it's not a flat to flex for. I don't think that's the play. All right, this shot becomes a little scary because we're pretty close. And you really just want to bury it into the hill. Buried into the hill, sit down, 35 feet. That's not terrible. No, that was the branch to beat. Dang. Also, I just realized this is the hole that we could see the fan from. So that's pretty cool. All right, hopefully time for a solid bounce back. It's only 190 feet. That's fine. Oh, it's a bit farther than I thought it was. I thought it was maybe like 25 past these trees. Oh man, I really thought things would be getting a little more fade up here. They're just kind of dropping instead of actually fading. Alrighty, hole nine, 172, going back up this hill. Off it, ah. I almost wonder if that line doesn't shape better to a backhand turnover. Oh, dang. Another bogey. All right, we're back to even. 12 holes to play. These bogeys are starting to piss me off. All right, it looks like we're heading into Daneland with a lot of like Norse stuff. It's only 244. One tree to miss in the middle of this fairway as long as you make this gap. I've not given you enough birdies this video and for that, I apologize. May this be recompense. I sincerely apologize. That should be easy par. I do think it is Viking stuff because there's a Viking helmet on the basket. All right, we're straight down there, 261 feet. Looks like there's a right and a left fairway. We've not really been hitting gaps though, so I wish I had a grenade so I could just throw over everything. Gotta dig deep. Can't take a bogey and really focus up on my hit points. I've been focusing on the line, but not my hit points. Perfect. So I threw a second shot because I've been swooping my hyzers and I wanted to be like, hey, why the heck am I swooping on my hyzers? Let me figure this out. Kicked off a tree, went straight left, missed almost everything, but luckily hit something because just past where it is right there, look, that would have sucked. Very grateful that it hit something because it was still like 20 feet in the air at this point on a 12. Back nice neck time, baby. It's 387 feet. It looks like it's kind of sneaking through this way. Part of me thinks it's a turnover. I, I don't see the full line, because you can still barely see the basket. Yeah, it really looks like a turnover that gets stable towards the end, but it's hard because you gotta push the ceiling. So I think I would go CD1 here. I think it's just this Star Destroyer. Kind of flat, let it turn a bit. <coughs> turn, dude! Oh, that was exactly what I wanted to do. We're up higher, we're up higher, we're up higher. I should throw my Echo Star Destroyer. Everything is, nothing is flipping.
One thing it does, I hit the freaking tree. That's really cool, though. Shit, they're on heat, I guess. I need flippier discs. Closest one I got was a heat that is like 30 feet and it hit a tree, so it would have been even better. But I think that just goes to show that I need to find a flippy distance driver. I might even want like a flippy 11 speed because I feel like that's a little more controllable. It might flip easier than a 12 or 13 speed. I'll, I'll think about it, but. Thank you, tree. Pures are good. All right, hole 13 looks sick. 400 foot par three, mid or putter? That's the question. Looks like there is a nice backstop on this one. I think it's either a pure or pathfinder. I think I've been throwing the pathfinder better than the pure. And focus on your hit point. Oh, that's not my hit point. It's lucky though, thank you very much. So I'm over rotating most shots right now. This is a hole where all signs are screaming at you to lay up but I'll deal with the consequences of my actions. They're not good consequences. I think we're just outside the circle. Let's go, that's so good, come on. All right, I think that putt is what we needed to get some momentum rolling. Kind of a forehand, but it seems like it might need to be a turnover. Kind of with my pure or an overhand. I'm not great at those. Maybe it should have been backhand. Uh, yes, should have been. Oh, both suck. Oh, I thought I did it. Just short. All right, this course definitely isn't going to give you any. 245 uphill. Looks pretty severely uphill, probably plays closer to 320, I guess. Since we do have that bit of a low ceiling, probably wants to just throw a CD1 on some Annie at it. I think we're gonna go that S line one. Just hit a line, that's all I ask right now. Yes, scoop. Let's go, that's so good. For you people who care, what I did different there that I felt was I slowed down my feet and then focused on throwing out the disc and hitting a hit point. Cause sometimes when I'm going too fast, I can over rotate, especially if my body's feeling a little tired. So knowing that, slowing down, hitting this tight gap, and we finally parked on. And we're, oh, this is gonna say under par, we're not, we're even. <laughs> finally. All right, let's make it happen. Hole 16, par three, 265. I think up here, at it, flat is good. Ooh. Remember the basket we played a couple holes ago? We're 30 feet away from that basket. I really thought this was gonna be a phenomenal shot, but sit. Okay, that's fine. We're just trying to get under par. So par is not bad. We end with the Yahtzee, we're five down. We get one of them. I am more than happy, because that means I can go get some food from a van. Hole 17, 297, straight down there. Gotta stop throwing it so hard. Smooth it out, especially here, where you got the big tree in the middle. You really kinda wanna split it to the right side and just let it hit the ground maybe 30 feet past it and it'll get some ground action and it'll most likely filter you towards the basket. But hitting up that hill, worst case scenario, like you don't roll down the hill, more than likely. Thank you, Tree. Wow, I am like really struggling with throwing like down the hill. Dude, this Opto Pure really does not want to stay with me. This is another time where it's like just on the edge of the cliff. Jeez. Let's capitalize on some good luck. I'm sure there are some courses close that have more elevation change maybe, but this is by far the most elevation change I've ever played on a course, I think. There's one in, Big Sky Montana, that rivals it, I think. But I think this is more. 
Because instead of like playing switch back up the hills, you're just kind of like, oh, let's go up and let's go down. Let's go up and let's go down. Just throw something straight. You don't need it to fade. We got a tailwind, so we'll throw up here. Man, I am not throwing that disc very well today at all. That's really disappointing. This is an easy hole. Just hit the gap. Like, come on, dude. That's it. Sorry you had to see that self-talk. It's all right, I'll make the 120 footer. Maybe, probably not, but maybe. Positive self-talk, AKA delusion. Oh no. Easy three. Can I just pretend that was the first one, please? Don't think about the envy being parked. All right, hole 19, par four, 518. You can probably see it all the way down there. Looks like a big turnover, which I might try to throw a sky turnover. Okay, all right, looking like I definitely would have wanted to be a little more in the fairway down here, even if I just threw like a mid to the bottom of this hill. Oh, I actually have a hyzer line. Ah, come on, dude. Was that really so hard? <laughs> I parked it. It's taking some humbling shots, but now it's just time to protect. <sighs> Drop. Long putt. Little headwind. No, I pulled it. Oh, my mechanics are so off. <sighs> Two more holes. Gotta get back under par. I like that they're making you get your cardio in here on the second to last hole. You gotta go up over here so you can see where the basket is. Woo. Up to the right. Or a forehand, but turnover seems way easier. This course, significantly harder than Wonderview. And because of that, I probably will rate it higher. It's a harder course to come play though. If like you either don't have the fitness for it or you feel like you're gonna lose some discs, so definitely don't throw second shots because there's some potential for discs to just fly down hills. You saw that a little bit today, which I guess is lucky because I'm just spraying everywhere. I'm not throwing it even close to where I want to for the most part, but yeah, this is a beast. I will be back. Maybe on camera, maybe not. Cause I think, like, I think my setup weighs about 20 pounds, like 15 to 20 pounds. And so carrying that over these 21 holes, ugh, I'm dying. Just a hyzer with the zone. Oh, that might be a little short. Oh, I thought that was perfect. Okay, not as bad as I thought. Let's get this eagle, baby. Please be a big downhill hole. All right, we need a birdie, which should be so easy on this hole. 555 feet, super downhill. I really do wish I had like a hyzer flippy disc. I almost wonder if I should throw the heat. Gotta see how high these trees come on the right side. They're, they're pretty tall. We're gonna throw a really big anti-flex with my Star Destroyer and hopefully get it there. Just get over those trees and have a little finish. We might have an eagle look, but no matter what, we need a birdie to get under par. Oh, stop turning so much. Dude, I suck at disc golf today, guys. I'm sorry. There's a decent amount of headwind out here. I didn't really feel a lot of it from the tee pad. And it's like not even hard shot, it's a hyzer. Yep, just throw it through this gap, around that tree, sit it down by the basket. Through the gap. I was over to that. All right, all right, all right. Got it. At least we didn't shoot over par. I guess that's a win in and of itself. Oh, I thought that was low. If you get the chance to make it out to this beautiful property, I would absolutely say to come do it. Prepare yourself for a hike. Bring some snacks for your round, because it's going to be longer than you think. Nothing super insane, but like a little under three hours, which for having a camera is honestly not too bad, but I am going to have to put this as number two under Wonderview. Personally, I like the course better, and I would rather come out here as a metric for like, hey, which course do I think that the majority of you guys would enjoy more? 
probably is gonna be Wonderview, unless you want an extreme challenge or just an extreme hike. You know what, no, we're just gonna put it at number one. This is my list, I can do what I want. And that'll probably mean that every single time that we play a new course, it's at the top of the list because I just love coming and playing all these places. Yeah, Glen Isle, wow. $10 just like one review. I don't see a season pass option anywhere, but thank you guys for watching Into the Mountains. If you want to watch the first episode in the series, check it out right down there. I need to go find all of my drivers that I launched off of this hill that most of them hit the road because I stunk. <sighs> then snag some food. Thank you guys for watching. See you tomorrow.